Hey, so and cousin, you already know what Tommy lives in a minute. And I made it horror stories in a minute. And I made it horror stories. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> what is this one? Where we at? We at I am our scary tales house. About to cut up, about to get into some crazy shit. We'll be watching Three True McDonald's Horror Stories Animated. We love doing these restaurants. Why? Because y'all be cutting up at these restaurants. We just did a Red Lobster one, and y'all was fucking it up at Red Lobster. Stealing, scamming. Y'all some scamming assholes. But let's see what. What? Y'all was giving at me, um at Red Lobster. Everywhere else, it'd be some scary shit going on. <laughs> Red Lobster, y'all decided to scam. Crazy. So let's get on into it. Let's watch together. As I always say, feel free to go over there and watch their stuff with them. But bring your ass back over here. Yeah, you know we don't. Mm -mm, we don't even play like that. <laughs> Just kidding. Feel free to be wherever you at. But again, come back. Go on and grab your blunts, please. Grab a bottle of water, grab a bag of chips, and grab a blanket so you can be snug. Okay? Okay. And let's get on into this video, y'all. If you want to, you can like the video now, or you can like it at the end. I'll ask you later. But let's jump into it right now. Let's get on into it. Let's see what's about to happen. What is the strangest thing that has happened to you in a McDonald's? Surely everyone will tell you that they found a bug in their food, or that they saw a fight. No. But what I experienced was much, much worse. Mm -hmm. This happened to me while I was cleaning the McDonald's parking lot. It was a normal day, and as lot. usual, the only thing on my mind was thinking about going home as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. While I was lost in thought, I began to hear footsteps approaching me. It didn't sound like the footsteps of a customer or a friend leaving with their you food. Know. They were the halting and furtive footsteps of someone stalking me. Those footsteps were coming from behind me, and they stopped the moment I turned around. I could vaguely make out someone hiding in the shadows. Did they no. want to rob me? Who's there? I plucked up my courage, grabbed the cleaning supplies, and decided to run to the front door. Like, Suddenly, go inside. a silhouette interrupted ah, me and stood in my way. It was a woman I knew. Her name was Sandra. Hit her. She was a well-known girl in the area. But for all the wrong reasons, sometimes she could be a very sweet girl. And even though we knew she worked the streets, she was very nice to everyone and never got in trouble. Other times, it was different. Mm. She would insult us and could behave very erratically. Some mm, classmates told us stories of times that she had threatened them or tried to hit them, but those she were only rumors. That day, she was stranger than usual. How you know they were she was in her underwear, and even though she had known me for months, she tried to sexually proposition me, which I refused. That's when the chaos started. Furious, she pulled out a knife and pointed it at me. Who the hell do you think you are to reject me? Do you think you're better than me? Do you think I'm worthless? No, Sandra, I I'm no, working. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disrespect you. <laughs> What's wrong? Are you alright? Where am I? What's going on? Bitch, Sandra, you, you were interrupting me. She lunged at me and threw me to the ground. She raised her knife with her eyes closed and brought it violently down towards my body. But to my surprise, she missed. The knife had embedded itself in the ground by the side of my head. Without touching a hair on my head, she raised her knife and drove it into the floor. Again and again. For her last attack, Sandra opened her eyes and tried to stick it into me. But I stopped her, and by like, squeezing her wrist with her enormous force, I managed to times. get her to let go. When I saw her face a second later, I realized that I hadn't outmatched her strength. She had simply zoned out. She had a blank stare and drool was dripping from her mouth. It looked as if she had rebooted. Boy. From one second to the next, her eyes seemed to zone in yeah. and out of focus. When they returned to normal, she acted like I wasn't even there oh, and then she ran into her. the McDonald's. Without in wasting McDonald's. any time, 
I stood up and followed her at full speed. Hey, how are you? Sandra? You can't come in like that! Put on a shirt! What did you just say? Oh no, be careful! Before my co-worker Greg could react, Why? Sandra desperately ran up to him and tried to hit him, but he dodged her and fell to the floor. Before he could get up, Sandra displayed brutal force and lifted the huge cash register to throw it at his prone figure. Oh. Her eyes were red and she was foaming at the mouth. You strong she was terrified. ass bitch. She was behaving as if she had turned into a monster. I ran towards her and managed to push her away just Legit. as she threw the cash register, which smashed to the floor, narrowly missing Greg. Oh. Even more frustrated with not being able to kill him, Get your ass up, she started Greg. banging on all the tables with a terrifying war cry. The few customers that were still left at this time of night began to run as she lifted up the chairs and threw them against the glass. It worked out because there were no more people in danger of the projectiles. We were now alone with her. Sandra, calm down! Please, help me! Of course we all want to help you. Call calm the boys. down. Why Let go of that needle. Needle? Uh, what do you mean? In answer to my question, my co-worker saw Sandra's you hand see the and, needle? although it was very small, I could see a needle left in her hand. Oh no. Why do you want to help me? Nobody can help me! I don't need your help! Watch out! Her face changed again! With the needle in hand, Sandra rushed at me again, this time more determined than ever. She attacked me with the syringe and I managed to lock her hand. Oh, hell we no. Y'all gotta whoop her ass now. The trying to poke way. you with a needle. Damn it, help me! I'm sorry. Greg! Security should take care of this. I'll, I'll go call them. Greg! No! Come help me! You coward! You bitch! While I was distracted, the woman kicked me in the stomach and I fell backward. Ah! She was about to pounce on me again, and this time I couldn't Don't do let anything her hit to you stop with her. The needle. But to my luck, the strangest thing happened. As if someone had flipped a switch, Sandra decided not to attack me anymore and Get instead ran ass over ass to the ice cream machine to feed herself. What? Ice cream! I ran in her direction and managed to get the syringe off her. She didn't even put up any resistance. She just kept devouring ice cream. A few seconds later, Greg and the security Press guard the showed bitch. up and detained her until the police arrived Press a little while later and took her away. Could have been dead. Soon after, we found out that Sandra hadn't been under the influence of any drugs. Now, Although so she told everyone that she struggled syringe. with multiple personality disorder, she had absolutely no memory of what had happened to her. And when she saw the security video, she cried uncontrollably. Today she is off here. of the streets and is receiving help in a recovery center. As for my co-worker and the security guard, they were kicked out shortly after. The cameras captured how Greg almost left me to die, die. and the security guard had been sleeping in an office throughout the ordeal. Sleeping? As for me, yeah. I still work Get at McDonald's, out. but never again will I agree to work the night shift. These are the actual mugshots of Sanda Suarez, who entered a McDonald's on approximately March 24th, 2014, wearing only underwear. After destroying the premises, security restrained her while she was eating ice cream. Sandra had no recollection of what happened, and attributes it to her having multiple personality disorder. Tweaking. And it's crazy because having multiple personality disorder is not tweaking. It's the people that don't get there, you know? Because if you know that you have it, you need to get it treated because they could be out here tweaking in the streets and then you wake up and you have no recollection of what's going on. You have no memory, you know nothing of what's happened, what what went on what happened and now you just stuck there you know what i mean like girl you know you should have went and got that shit handled you know i had been working night shifts at a mcdonald's restaurant with my best friend rachel for about three oh months we needed the extra cash for rent and too. also That's for school crazy. stuff in that short period, I had unfortunately attended to a lot of creepy and weird individuals, but nothing could have prepared me for what happened that very night. It felt like another slow night. It was almost 9.30pm and we had barely gotten any customers. Rachel and I were thinking of closing early because she had a date and I didn't mind catching some extra hours of sleep. Suddenly, the door swung open. A mysterious-looking man walked in. He was wearing a top hat and sunglasses. I mean, who wears shades at night? 
He also had a dreary-looking trench coat on. It was a bit unsettling and just out of style. He slowly glanced around the room for a few seconds before walking to a table. Rachel had an abrupt bathroom emergency, so it meant I had to go take his order. I took a deep breath, grabbed the order menu, and wore a fake smile. After I was ready, I walked to his table. He was on his phone. Good evening, sir. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? I said. It was almost like he didn't hear me, but after a few seconds, he spoke. I'll have two large burgers, extra fries, and a Diet Coke. His voice was deep, and I'm pretty sure there was a bit of a southern accent in there. While writing the order, I could feel the heat of his gaze on me. He had taken off his sunshades. It was common for men to stare and probably ask for your number later, but when I lifted my head, I realized he wasn't staring at my face or anywhere else. He was staring at my hands. There was a creepy look in his eyes and an almost demented smile on his face. He looked mesmerized. I knew there was nothing special about my hands. I didn't even have nail polish on. I cleared my throat audibly. Ahem. Will that be all, sir? I asked. Not at all. He briskly responded. I say you have very beautiful hands. Do you mind if I touch them? He asked. I would have never touched him with a ten-foot pole, but then I thought maybe he was some hand-modeling agent. Plus, I was also hoping not to make things weird so I could get a good tip. Okay. I stretched my hands out. He took off his leather hand glove, reached for my hand, and began to caress it softly. His hands felt rough and edgy, like he had been plowing a farm all day. Things quickly became awkward and almost sexual. I retracted my hands and feigned a stifled chuckle. (laughs) Okay, sir. I should go get your order now. I quickly walked away. It was a very nerve-wracking experience, and it probably was the first red flag. Luckily for me, after I was done with the order, Rachel was back from her emergency. I asked her to help me take it to the table, but I didn't mention anything else to her. She casually walked to the table and delivered the order. They exchanged a few words, and then she walked back. What did he say? I abruptly asked. Oh, nothing. I think he was trying to hit on me. He asked what time we were getting off, and he gave off some pretty cringy vibes. Definitely not my type. Rachel responded, then walked back into the kitchen. I pondered on her words a bit, then ultimately just concluded I was overthinking it. Big mistake. A few minutes later, he just stood up and left. He had barely even touched his meal, and he paid in full and left a huge tip on the table. Rachel and I decided it was also time to close up. It was about 10.15 p.m. We packed it in and turned off the lights. It was already dark out, but our apartment was like three blocks away. I waited with her till her boyfriend came to pick her up. We said our goodbyes and then they drove off. off. They were going in the opposite direction, so I didn't ask for a lift. I began my short stride home. The walkway was pretty lonely. Aside from the few street lights that weren't flickering on and off, it would have been pitch black darkness. I would usually walk home with Rachel, but on nights like that, I had to fly solo. After a while, I began to hear stumping footsteps behind me. I looked over my shoulder. The person was shrouded in darkness, and he was too far behind. I continued walking. Seconds later, I noticed that his pace had hastened. He was gaining on me. My heart began to race. My first thought was that he was probably a mugger. With jittery hands, I slipped out pepper spray from my bag and concealed it. I never leave home without it. I could feel he was right behind me. My heart was about to leap out of my mouth. In a moment of courage, I swung around so I could spray him. But to my shock, there was nobody there. I felt my mind was just playing tricks on me again. I cut a sigh of relief and tucked in my pepper spray. But as I was about to turn around, a large man pounced Ah! on me and pushed me to the ground. It happened so quickly. It was the same man from the restaurant. He pinned my left hand to the ground with one hand while I struggled. And then he pulled out a knife from his trench coat. I was scared to death. It looked like he wanted to cut off my hand. 
but before oh, he could go through with it, no. I managed to slip out my pepper spray. I fired straight into his eyes. Yeah. While he was wiping his eyes vigorously, you I drove my him. knee into his gonads hard, and he fell off me. Then I scrambled him. to my feet and frantically sprinted home while screaming okay. at the top of my voice. I bolted my him. doors and immediately dialed 911. The entire ordeal had me shaken up for days. It took the police about two weeks to find the man. They traced him to his suburban home where he lived alone, but that wasn't all. Upon forced entry, the police uncovered a concealed basement, and within the basement, they found disturbing and gut-wrenching sight of severed hands hanging all over the walls. The man was put on death row. The police are still trying to find the owners of the severed hands, if they're still alive, that is. I'm just mm. glad mine didn't end up on some sick freak's wall as a trophy. Yeah, because I'd be killing people just cut off their hands. Uh -oh. When I first took the job of a manager at McDonald's, the owner walked me through a few rules that I'd have to follow to keep the place running. Okay. Look, Nathan, no matter what Joe says, don't ever let him be Ronald McDonald. Um, sorry, what? I know it sounds weird, but trust me on this one. Joe is the cleaning guy who worked for McDonald's, mm -hmm. and he seemed sweet, irrespective of how he looked. I've always believed in not judging a book by its cover, so when the owner mentioned that, I got confused. But what's wrong Boy. with Joe? No he one can answer that. He just has Joe. this crazy fandom for Ronald McDonald. For months, he's been pestering me to allow him to dress up as Ronald and let him entertain our guests, but that can't happen. Never, ever. I hope that's clear to you. Obviously, he knows I guess something so. that you don't. Good. You can go back to work now. Best of luck. I didn't want to ask him more about the matter, as it was my first day and I still needed the job. So, I just decided to follow what he said. The next day, the moment I stepped into work, I was face to face with Joe. Holding a broom and wearing an ear to ear smile on his face, Joe asked, What time will you be free? I need to talk to you about work. Let's see, Joe. It's my first day and a lot is expected of me. Maybe when we both get done, I'll hear you out. Okay, I'll finish with my work as well. The day started well and customers kept coming, but when the clock struck seven, I heard a kid scream coming from the tables. I rushed over and saw the kid crying and his mother yelling at one of our waitresses. I'll sue you guys for this. How irresponsible are you? Leaving a nail on a child's food? Oh, Excuse me, ma'am. I'm the manager here. Please tell me what the issue is. The woman showed me a big nail and oh, an said that she found it in nail. her kid's burger. We compensated them with free meals and gave them enough coupons for them to eat for a month at McDonald's. The owner what? was out of town and I wanted to do my best to stop this news from spreading, so I called out an emergency meeting. I asked the chefs how this could have happened, to which they said they had no idea. No that one could make it. out how a nail had ended up in a burger. An we need to do something nail. to keep this news from spreading, guys. If this gets to the owner, all of us can kiss our jobs goodbye. How about I dress up as Ronald and entertain our customers? Boy. I have so many ideas that'll make them come here for more. No. Please, Nathan. Everyone no. looked at me like it would be a terrible mistake, but judging the situation, I made the call. Something is better than nothing, right? Why would you? No! Fine, Joe. You're on it. Do whatever it takes to blow our customers away. Boy. <laughs> you won't regret this. Yes, you will. Joe left, and we all got on with the rest of our day. Yes, you will. I could hardly that sleep that night, though. Thing. I was worried that the owner was going to snap at me once he found out what happened no, today. Bitch, you're fired. The next day, when I arrived at work, I didn't Joe see Joe anywhere. There. I started asking around for him, and then the restaurant door opened, and in walked Joe. Mm -hmm. He was dressed as Ronald oh, McDonald, and I kid you not, nothing about his appearance seemed appealing. The costume was normal, but the makeup was a little over the top. It was heavily caked on, smudged all over his not-so-inviting face, which served to make him a creepier version of Ronald. But he would be giving kids balloons and toys, so no one was going to focus on his looks. Who. Customers started to come in, and Joe stood at the door greeting them. Everything was going fine until I overheard a conversation between Joe and a nine-year-old girl. I don't like hide-and-seek. Then we can play this new game. It's called Tickle Fight. 
Um, what kind of a game is that? Fun. You can tickle all over my belly and I will tickle your feet. What do you think? I don't no. want to play that either. The kid went back to her table and I immediately called Joe to my office. Yeah. Sandra said you wanted to see me. When I confronted him, he spoke like, like what he said to the nine-year-old girl wasn't that big of a deal. Joe, you can't touch the kids or ask them to touch you. We can get in trouble for that. Oh, I just wanted to make the kids smile. No. She was being so grumpy from the start. No. no tickle fights, okay? Maybe just entertain them without any physical interaction. Is that clear? Boy. Fine. I will try plan B. Joe left with what a sour face and I began B? to consider the owner's words. Did I make a mistake saying yes to Joe? Obviously. I might have rested in the office for 10 minutes when I heard a scream. Ah! Are you crazy? You just gave us a heart attack. This isn't funny. I again rushed outside and saw Joe sitting in the back seat of a customer's car. The couple what was leaving the with their fuck? takeout. When they got inside the car, Joe jumped on them, screaming. I'm loving it. I took the customer's no. reproach on behalf of Joe and returned their money by giving them free food. Once the customers left, I became furious. What the hell is wrong with you? You know what? Everyone warned me about what a freak you are, but I just kept giving you chances. You're fired, Joe. Just Ain't take your things and that. get lost. Joe didn't say a single word. His mouth hung open like he had just received the shock of his life and his left eye twitched. Tears rolled down his cheek, left but not twitched? once did he cry. Taking his red wig off, he said in a low, creepy voice, you will this? regret this, Nathan. Oh, I, know. I went home in a bad mood. I don't remember when I passed out on the couch, but a sudden sound woke me up. I realized it was coming from my room. As I pushed open the door of my room, I oh, saw the most there. horrible sight. Joe had gotten in from the bedroom window I left open, and he was scribbling all over the wall with red crayons. <laughs> Joe? Wh what do you think you're doing? He turned his face to I me and his makeup so was messily awesome. smudged, making him look more horrible than ever. I'm loving it! <laughs> I'm loving it! He went on ruining my walls until the cops came and took him away. I later heard he was sent to a mental institution. Somewhere deep down, I think the nail ending up in one of our burgers had to have been Joe's work. Obviously. Obviously it was Joe. And you should have listened when old boy told you not to let Joe into the damn suit. Because he told you he ain't had to give your ass no reason why. You're the manager. He the man above you. So that man told you not to let that man up in the suit. Why would your stupid ass be hard-headed and do it anyway? Just hard-headed and dumb. Hard-headed and dumb. Why? So let me know what y'all think was your favorite. As I always say, go subscribe to IMR. They be cutting up. Everybody be cutting up. All the boys, all the girls, all the cousins. You know? Go and yeah. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. I say number one was the best. Especially the twist at the end with it being based on a true story. You know I love those. And then the other two was good too. Number three might have been the best too because why are you going to be hard headed and it's, uh, trying to tickle the baby? You can tickle my belly, I'll tickle your feet. No. Get your ass up out of here. And you know that man got fired. Nathan got fired. You know he got fired. The, that was mad complaints in two days. You just got there. Two days and you got mad complaints? Yeah. Fired. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. I love y'all. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me. I appreciate you every day, every step of the way. I love you guys so much. Please like the like the video. Say something in the comments. And until next time, you guys. Bye.